Janet Burley. Rita Hare. Jean Glenell. Jennifer Hoffer. Christine Ferno. Jim Dusha. Patrice Russo. And Pat, just for the record, Janet O, uh, Janet Uliat, and uh, Chief Vincent are excused absences today. All right, wonderful, wonderful. Well, can I have a motion to call a meeting to order? So moved. Wonderful. All right, wonderful, everybody. Well, uh, let's uh, review the minutes from our April 6th meeting. And if anybody has any questions or comments, uh, anything they'd like to add, please do so. And if, if not, can I get a motion to accept the meeting minutes from April 6th? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of April 6th as presented. I'll second, second it. Thank you. Who was that second? Right. Janet Broly. Thank you, Janet. You're welcome. Great, great. All right, Patrice, can you give me a report, us a report on the bills and vouchers, all that wonderful good stuff? First, I would just like to welcome Jean Duenel. She is our newest council on aging member, and we are delighted to have her. Welcome, oh, Jean. Welcome. 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 Thank you. I, I have a lot to learn, so I'll give it my best. That's, That's all right. I can do. We're all here to help you. I know you are, Christine. Thank you. Yeah, just the fact that you're volunteering uh, is, is really great. It's wonderful. Absolutely. Well, I, I look at this as a learning process for me. Um, I love this town, and I just want to do any little thing I can to... Give it a hand. Oh, My every little bit helps. Raised here, so Good. I feel like it's home. Well, don't feel bad because we're all still learning. <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> we never, we did, we never stop. Right, That's right. <laughs> you can't, right? <laughs> so for the, the bills and vouchers, um, we sent out our newsletter um, for May first. Everybody should be receiving it, or if they already haven't. Uh, so we had the newsletter mailing, and we had a phone bill, and we had a couple of um, items from W.B. Mason attached to the newsletter. So just a couple of vouchers on the grant, and one on the, the phone bill is on the regular COA budget. Okay. All right. Any, anything else on uh, bills and vouchers? No, nope, that would be it. All right. And the FY22 budget, how's that looking? So we go to town meeting on May 15th. Yep. And is it May 15th? It is on a Saturday. Yep. Saturday, May 15th. And that is when our budgets will be voted on. So I don't <laughs> have my budget yet. I don't anticipate any um, problems. I have met with the selectmen and we did meet with FinCom. And the only change in my budget would be... Um, Sandy has retired, so her 19-hour week position is open. Jennifer was at 15 hours, and she's been moved up to 30. So okay. I'm trying to, um, I'm going to wait until after the town meeting, obviously, and then I'll be potentially hiring somebody part-time for the senior center, 10 to 15 hours a week, just so once we open, we actually have somebody else there to replace um, Sandy, who retired. And Jennifer mm -hmm. will be cross-training and outreach, so she'll be busy doing both both of those yeah i want to thank sandy she did a great job for us she did yeah she did we will um at some point at some once point we reopen and we're able to do something have you know a little get together for her of course absolutely absolutely so uh the next topic which is somewhat exciting we're finally going forward with the flooring and so the place <clears> will look like it's brand new when we do open Brand new. So we have spent the last couple of weeks. Um, Katie, our per diem, has come back. She had had a baby and now she's she's back. So she helped us pack up. So Jennifer and I and Katie have been packing um, everything up and moving it to the back of the center because the main floor is where the asbestos is. So the asbestos removal will start on May 13th and they anticipate they'll be working uh, the 13th, 14th, 17th, and 18th. Um, just to get rid of all of that, rip out the carpet, get rid of all the asbestos, do all the air quality and all that stuff. And then um, the carpet will be going in after that in the new flooring. Um, we did have a leak in the kitchen 
either it was the dishwasher or the refrigerator, we're not really sure. At some point, um, it softened the floor. So the kitchen floor will now be part of the project. And as well, um, one of the closets off the conference room because it had some chip tile in it. So it's kind of a hazard because there's a little divot there. Uh, neither of those rooms had asbestos. So that's gonna be easy breezy. So we're really excited about it. Um, Jim and Pam are painting the front office and the back office. So- Oh, that's awesome. Thank you guys. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we have nothing better to do with our time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so everything will have a very fresh look when everybody gets back. It is gonna look a little bit different. Um, we're not gonna have any books or puzzles. Nothing um, that can be sh DVDs or any of that that can be shared and brought back into the center for the time being. Um, however, we will have groups in small spaces. So the main room is going to be the only room we're going to be using. And um, we will be able to spread out in there. So I think with the hardwood, it's going to be a lot easier using that room. So mm. we're really excited about it. And I will post pictures as soon as everything is finished. Oh. Great. So that leads into our opening date, which is? We're hoping for possibly June 7th, but that's going to uh, depend on if they run into any problems with the asbestos, that could be extended or the carpeting that could be extended. Um, there is a, a little bit of a back order on getting flooring and other construction materials, as everybody knows. So we're hoping that we're going to be able to open the, for June 7th, but we will be in touch with everybody. We had asked everybody to, um, in the last, in the newsletter that's gone out now for May 1st, it says, please call and sign up. So we will have, we know the osteo class is going to come back. That's going to be on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 o'clock at the same time in the main room, social distance with masks. Um, we asked everybody if they want to bring a bottle of water, they can. We're not going to serve any coffee or water or anything that's deemed communal uh, food or beverages. Um, and we do know that yoga is coming back on Tuesdays. We know that Pam is coming back to paint. So each student will be at their own individual table. We bought disposable tablecloths. So we don't have to wash anything down. They just they put on the table and when Pam cleans up after the first class, she'll throw those out and set up for the next class. She's going to be doing a morning and an afternoon so we can accommodate all of her painting students. And bingo Zoom also, again, each person at their own table. I've kind of measured it out. And now that it's empty, it's a lot easier to, to measure it to see how many people we can actually put. So I would say um, we could probably have 10 or 11 um, for osteo or yoga even possibly for painting because Pam usually doesn't sit. She's walking around, you know, helping everybody. So I think we'll be able to safely do that. Also, I would have to say that every single solitary senior that is one of our regular seniors at the senior center has been vaccinated because we've either talked to them all or I've put them in for appointments. So I'm pretty confident that all of our seniors uh, have been vaccinated as has the staff. So I think we'll be in really good shape. And I think it's time. I know that, uh, Everybody's excited to be able to come back and we are delighted to have some activity in there. Great. So what, what is gonna be the screening process? And um, suppose you do have seniors that are not vaccinated. Uh, you know, I'm sure of course, you know, they can come in, but what will your screening process be when they come through the door? So we will be staggering people. We're asking people not to congregate in the parking lot or any of that. When they're coming and signing up, when they're signing up for the program, because you can only come in by sign up, then it's going to be, this is your slot. So if you could come at like for your exercise class at 950 and somebody else comes at 955, so that we can kind of get everybody in and out. Well, we will be doing temperature checks and probably asking, you know, have you been sick? Have you been exposed to anybody with COVID? Those type of um, questions and then filtering people in to uh, be able to sit. We do that already for the blood pressure clinic and for the podiatrist. So we're very well versed in all of that. Um, and yeah, we have a, a scanner. Jennifer and I pop our temperatures every time we walk in and out of the senior center. We've both been vaccinated. We're very, uh, very well versed in all of that. And then our cleaning protocols have always been, uh, we wipe every surface down every morning, every phone, every pen, uh, the railings. We wipe all that stuff down every morning and every afternoon. But we were doing that before COVID just during regular flu season or with a really large group. So. Yeah. Think that so we'll be how, are we, 
How will you handle like uh, vaccinations? Are you going to ask people if they're fully vaccinated? Are you going to ask them to show you their card? Uh, because that's kind of a sticky point now with asking people to actually show their card because technically I guess that's a HIPAA violation. Mm -hmm. So we won't be requiring anybody to be vaccinated to visit the center because we just can't. Yeah, we can't. Yeah. So if they are, they are. And if they're not, they're not. But like I said, I know all of our regulars are. And if somebody else comes, as long as everybody's masked, that's pretty much the state guidelines. So. Good. Good. Trace, a question? Yes. Uh, do you think... Do you think the restrictions you're following are going to be lessened by June 7th when you open as far as the numbers of people you can accommodate? As of right now, I the state guidelines that I have in the space that we have square footage wise is 10 people, 12 people, including staff. That's what we that's what we have right now. That's what everything was printed out last week that I got. I printed it out and that's what it said. So I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks that things will move forward. I don't think we'll be up to you know full capacity anytime soon. And you know, I'm just going by whatever the state says and whatever the local board of health says. So are they telling you so many people per square foot? Correct. Okay. Yep. Based on our footage, I can have 10 seniors plus two staff. All right. And where is the asbestos? Is that part of the carpet or is it in the tile underneath the carpet? So the asbestos is in the tile and in the mastic, mastis glue that's holding the tile on. And that is only in the main room, the osteo room, my office in the front. That's the only place it is. Everything else was New. It was either um, it's either plywood or it was cement. So whatever part of that basement where the conference room to the kitchen to the back office goes, that didn't have any asbestos tile at all. Okay. Thank you. The good news with that is that's very easy to remove, which is a positive thing. And we have a great company coming up to do it. So. Yeah. Any other uh, programs or anything? Um, other than just those those few programs, we can't do Zumba yet. We can't do line dancing yet. Um, we can't have any communal meals. So, like I said, we're just doing that soft opening to get everybody reestablished. I hope to be able to do, if we're not able to open to do something fun, maybe do some kind of an outdoor barbecue or an outdoor um, music program at one of the fields or something for uh, the seniors at some point during the summer, either before it gets too hot or later summer when it cools off, if we're not able to do something at the center, so. It'd be nice. Mm -hmm. All right, so how the uh, vaccinations and clinic going? So we've done, oh gosh, I would have to guesstimate somewhere between four and 500 seniors we've put in. And of course the Mad Dash in January and February and early March was a nightmare, but now I get links every couple of days uh, from the Board of Health um, for the Uxbridge McCluskey Clinic. And I can put anybody in um, for appointments right away. So it's been great. So as soon as somebody calls, I just put them right in the computer, the Jenner I do. We check the phone um, in the evenings after we're gone and we check it every weekend to make sure we haven't missed anybody. And uh, it's gone quite well. So right now we have more vaccinations than people, which is a, which is a good problem to have. Yeah, that seems to be the case everywhere now. If anybody wants a vaccine, they certainly can get it very quickly, which is uh, encouraging. And, and hopefully people take advantage of that. And Jennifer and I have worked at the clinic, a group of really nice people um, that are down there volunteering or working at it. And um, it's really well organized. It's very well set up. Um, we will be working there over the next couple of weeks while we're kind of closed for all the renovations. We're either going to be working from home or uh, working at the clinic. So, Yeah, that's what I thought was really, really well organized. You know, it was the distance, the whole bit. It was awesome. Yep. Well, any other business anybody wants to bring up? I have a couple of things. We got some really, really exciting news. Our computer scanner system is on the way. 
So mm -hmm. when seniors come back, everybody will have a little key tag and they'll be able to just uh, sign in, which will be really nice. So we don't have to wipe down pens all day long. Um, how, will work, how will that work, Patrice, with newcomers? So as soon as they come to the senior center and they, they come in, our regulars will all be in the computer, but it takes us minutes just to make them a key card real quick. Oh, nice. Yep. Okay. So everybody will have their own, uh, their own key card. And it will be really nice because um, this, my senior center system is attached to um, the executive office of Elder Affairs annual report, which I spend about three weeks doing. And it takes about all every month doing all the repeat attendance and all that stuff, counting it by hand. Um, and now it'll automatically be in the computer. So all I have to do is put in a couple of things and I can send the report over via email or just print it out and send it snail mail. So I, for one, am delighted because that report is a lot. Yeah, huge um, asset that is. Yep, and um, we also have uh, our phone number attached to it. So if we have to cancel a program or we want to send out a new program or something big is happening in town or whatever, our phone number is associated with the call system. So you will get a call from the senior center, be an automated caller, it'll be my voice or Jennifer's voice explaining that a class was canceled or you know, a class is full or maybe if there was something going on in town that um, maybe some of the people don't have the reverse 911 uh, call, we'd be able to use it. It would be a familiar call for them. So uh, it was an extra $300, but it's in the grants and we thought it was well worth it for the two years to be able to have our own phone number associated with that kind of a call. Yeah especially if there's a storm coming or if there's power outage and we know how, you know, we can update people. So I'm very excited about that. Um, also representative McKenna, um, who has been, you know, wonderful to the center and to the seniors has earmarked $25,000 for us this year. So we find out on July 1st. Um, I don't think it's going to be an issue. I think once they earmark what they have, I think it does go through fruition and it does come to the, the place that they want to see it. Um, it will be used for our bathroom doors to make them handicap accessible and to have a pull cord in the bathroom in case somebody had an emergency or, um, so I think that's wonderful. We're really excited about that. I spent a couple of years writing ADA grants in order to achieve this and we haven't been able to achieve it thus far. And it is a little bit unsettling because the bathroom is located in the back of the center and the doors are very heavy. So if somebody was having an emergency or if somebody couldn't get back out of the bathroom because they're in a wheelchair and the, the doors are so heavy, would be able to be right there, be able to assist. So uh, I think that's going to be a, a wonderful thing, and we're really excited about that. Um, also, the the conference room, we have a lot of the metal cabinets, and they're they're pretty expensive. They cost about five or six hundred dollars a piece. We need more because we absolutely have no storage, and we are taking up storage in some of the closets. But those closets are utility rooms. It's the the furnace room for the post office, it's the furnace room for our center, and it's also the electrical panel and the Wi-Fi for the senior center where we have a lot of different things stored. Um, we also have one other closet that we use for either craft stuff, decorations, and then of course, Pam's painting class. And these, Pam's painting class, people are painting on glass. So it's not like you're just knocking over a canvas and you're like, oops, you break their painting, it's heartbreaking. So I don't like to run that room ever, because I'm always afraid I'm gonna knock something over. So I would like that room to be exclusive for the painting class. So that the only people that are going in there are the ones that are going in out to get their things or that the PM, the teacher would be in and out. Um, you know, some of those pieces take a long time to make on a piece of glass. And we have seen some get broken on the occasion uh, at different places and it is heartbreaking. So, and there, you know, it's a lot of work painting, so. Um, hopefully she'll be able to have her own closet. So that being said, I have an estimate for cabinets that match the cabinets that are already in the conference room to go along the side of the wall and then add an upper level to them. They'll match the kitchen too. Aesthetically, it would be very homey and we would have a lot of storage to be able to store our craft stuff and our decorations and, and other things. So with the money that's been earmarked from Representative McKenna, uh, we would be able to do the doors and all the cabinets and so it'll really look like a whole new place, hopefully sometime in July.
right. Well, any other business? We want to pick a next meeting date then, I guess. Do we want to try to do the next and next at the center? I could, I could potentially um, do it for the eighth, but I'm not sure if we'll be open yet. All right. Based on the um, the flooring project. Can we, can we can we still have the meeting if no other people are in the uh, center? Well, is that a possibility? So we have yoga from nine to ten on Tuesdays. And um, Pam, what day is your painting class? Tuesdays. Tuesdays all day in the morning. After right. 10, 10 30 to 12 30 and 1 30, 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Correct. So um, if you actually wanted to meet in person, you can always come here to use the resource room is open as an option. Oh, correct. Oh. Yeah, I, I think it's great to get, I mean, let's start trying to get back to some normalcy here. Yeah. yeah. So do we want to try for June at Town Hall until I know that how many people, and regardless of the carpet project, at least we'd still be able to be. Absolutely. If everybody's in agreement. Yeah. Sounds great. Yes. That Sounds was June good. 8th. June 8th, was that? June 8th, just to confirm. June 8th yeah. at 9 o'clock at the Town Hall. <laughs> and Christine, will you put that in the book for us? I will. Yep. Thank you. Oh, well, great. That's a, that's a great step forward. Yes. Yeah. That's Nine o'clock, you said? Yep, at the town hall. Okay. All right, great. Well, I hope everybody has a, a wonderful week. Um, I need a motion to adjourn the meeting, and we'll move on. <clears throat> so moved. Second. All right, everybody, you guys have a great week.